All right, welcome back. In this example, we're going to take a look at the simply supported beam with this uniformly distributed load W across the entire span between points A and B. We have a pin and a roller here. And in this video, we're actually going to try to derive the equations that represent the internal moments and shears and use those equations to plot our shear and moment diagrams. So just like before, when we start a shear and moment diagram problem, we want to very firstly draw our free body diagram, our free body diagram. So we have this W load, this uniformly distributed load here, and that's really sloppy, but bear with me. This is 25 Newton per meter over a span of 10 meters. And then we're going to have our reactions at A and B. Obviously, they are going to be 125 newtons each, and that's because we take the 25 newton per meter and multiply it by the length, which is 250 newtons, and we divide that by 2 because this is a simple span. It's uniformly distributed, so the reactions on either side are going to be 125 newtons each. So now when we're trying to come up with the equation for our shear diagram, we want to make sure that we pick spans to create our equations of simple and consistent loading. So we don't want loading with a lot of variations or point loads or any of that. We want to come up with equations between spans that are nice and clean and don't have like a random point load in the middle or this distributed load is changing without much of a pattern. So we're pretty lucky between A and B we only have one distributed load so we can go ahead and try to come up with the equation that represents the shear, the internal shear in this beam, in this span between A and B. So whenever we come up with these shear and moment equations, we want to take a random cut somewhere between that span and draw out this portion, either portion really, of the beam and then come up with our equations based off of that diagram. So if I go ahead and redraw that beam here and there's that cut that we drew here, we have our 125 newtons here, we have this distributed load that goes all the way to that cut. And this is W, which is 25 Newton per meter. And then our datum is gonna start at point A. This is point A right here. And I'm just gonna call it X. So any point along this cut is X. So this cut is located a distance of X from A. And remember, our internal positive sign convention for shear is going down if the cut is on the right side or if we're looking at the shear on the right side of the cut. And for a moment, it's going to be counterclockwise. So here's V of X and here's M of X. So we can actually use this diagram to come up with our shear equation. So remember, if a structure is in static equilibrium, then every portion of that structure is going to also be in static equilibrium, including this portion of this beam that we're looking at. So we can apply our equation, our static equation F, sum of forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. And I'm saying positive is going up. So we have that 125 newtons going up here at the reaction at A. And then we have this W, which I'm actually going to resolve into this point load just so we can come up with the reactions or the internal shear. So P is actually going to be this entire length, which starts from here, goes up to the cut, times W. That's going to give us what the magnitude of this uniformly distributed load is. So P is actually W times X. So the shear there is going to be W times X minus W times X. And then we have our V of X here, our internal shear at the cut. And this is going to be equal to zero. So if we plug in 25 Newton per meter for W, we're going to get 125 Newtons minus 25 Newton per meter times X minus V of X. And if I simplify this and just solve for Vx, we're going to get Vx is equal to 125 minus 25 times x newtons. So there it is. This is our equation for the internal shear at any point x between this span A, B, or in this span A, B. And you'll notice that this equation is linear because this term, this variable x, is raised to the first power. So it's x to the one power. And that means our shear is going to be linear. So if I go ahead and draw my shear diagram here using this equation, this is going to be our shear in newtons. 
we can use this equation to plot points along this diagram and come up with our shear diagram. So let's say I wanted the shear at this very first point here, which is x is equal to zero. Then I would have v x is equal to zero equal 125 minus 25 times zero, right? 25 times x, x is zero. So 25 times zero is zero. So the shear at x equals zero is gonna be just 125. So I'm gonna plot that right there. Well, what about a distance of v x equals 2.5 meters? So halfway between the halfway point, right? So somewhere over here. Well, that's gonna be 125 minus 25 times 2.5 meters. And that's gonna be equal to 62.5 5 newtons. So the shear somewhere here is going to be equal to 62.5 newtons. And this one here was 125, right? This point here. How about halfway at this beam? So at x equals 5 meters. So x equals 5 meters. Well, that's going to be 125 minus 25 times 5 meters. And, well, 25 times 5 is 125, and 125 minus 125 is 0. So at halfway, the shear is going to be 0. Okay, how about at 9 meters? So 1 meter just to the left of point B. So this point right here, this is 1 meter over from B. Well, Vx equals 9 meters is equal to 125 minus 25 times 9 meters, and that's going to be equal to negative 100 newtons. So that's going to be somewhere down here. This is negative 100. And then finally, what about at the very end of this span? So x is equal to 10 meters. Well, that's going to be equal to 125 minus 25 times 10 meters, and 125 minus 250 is negative 125 newtons. So that shear it's going to be negative 125. So you can see that if we plotted points, our shear diagram would be linear. And there you go. That's our shear diagram based off of this equation that we derived right there. So this is great, but what if we wanted to prove this equation was true? So let's say at this location here where x was equal to 2.5, we wanted to prove that the shear, in fact, was 62.5 newtons. Well, if I scroll down and give ourselves a little bit of room, we can actually do that. So what we can do is actually take a cut right there and draw that portion of the beam out. So I have point A is right here. We have this reaction of 125 newtons. Remember, we still have that distributed load here, W, which was equal to 25 newton per meter. And then here at that cut, we have our shear going down. So I'm just going to label it V. And that distance from A to that cut here was 2.5 meters. So this is 2.5 meters. Well, remember, every piece of this beam is in static equilibrium. So I'm going to take the sum of forces in the y direction and set that equal to zero. I have this 125 newtons here, and then I have this 25, so minus 25 newton meter or newton per meter times this distance, 2.5 meters, so 2.5 meters, and then I have minus V, and that's equal to zero. Well, 125 newtons here, and then minus 25 times 2.5 is 62.5 newtons. Minus V is equal to zero. Well, 125 minus 62.5 is 62.5 newtons. So minus V is equal to zero. There you go. If I add V to both sides, I get V is equal to 62.5 newtons. So that is correct. The shear at a distance 2.5 from our data at X, a distance 2.5 from point A is in fact 62.5. So we can see that our equation checks out. Now in the next part, in the next video, we're actually gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come up with this equation, but now for the internal moment and then draw our moment diagram. So see you in the next part.